If you're one of those people who thinks that this guy is just the dude from all those cheesy action movies, then I'm about to prove you dead wrong. Keep watching to find out which five performances I've selected that prove that Tom Cruise is a way better actor than you think. I think I broke something. Hello, and welcome to episode one of That Movie Show, the show where we talk about nothing but movies. As I said in the introduction, if you thought that Tom Cruise was just that dude that looks awesome running away from explosions, then be prepared to have your mind blown, because he's actually a very talented actor when you give him the right roles at the right time. In at number five is Ben Stiller's ensemble comedy Tropic Thunder, in which Tom Cruise plays the bullying, abusive, foul-mouthed dickhead Les Grossman as the uh, movie's main antagonist. The reason I've selected this performance is because it's very much Tom playing against type. Uh, generally speaking, you think of Tom Cruise as the very nice, friendly, affable kind of guy that everybody tends to get along with, and in this movie he plays the exact opposite. Underneath the bald cap, the fat suit, the fucked up giant hands, it's almost impossible to see the real Tom Cruise there anywhere, in performance or in physicality, so that makes it a very good performance for me. It's it's also a good reminder that Tom Cruise is actually very good in comedic performances. Earlier in his career, about half of the movies that he made were in comedic roles, so it's not really a surprise that um, he's no stranger to excellent comedic timing and excellent character acting. The third and final reason that I've selected this particular performance is that he's a scene stealer in this movie. He's so good in every scene that he literally steals it from everybody that he's in with. If you're up against comedic heavyweights like Ben Stiller, Jack Black, Robert Downey Jr., Steve Coogan, and you can steal scenes from them in comedic roles, then you must be a pretty funny guy. And I think it's a good example of just how good Tom Cruise can be in comedic roles. In at number four is Tom Cruise's uh, depiction of broken war hero Nathan Algren in the movie The Last Samurai. It's actually a great film to watch and I find it very interesting to see Tom play this role just because you get a good example of his dramatic range. If we ignore the final third of the movie where he, he just devolve into generic action hero Tom. The first two thirds of the movie is where the meat of the story is and that's where all the best acting is too. He starts the movie as someone who is haunted by his own past and is struggling to come to terms with things that he's done and he's basically trying to drink his way to an early grave. The reason why I like this performance so much is that some of these emotions and actions are things that aren't going to be native to Tom. I'm pretty sure he's never been an alcoholic and I'm fairly certain that he doesn't have a haunted past since he's been a big star for a long long time. So it's interesting to see where he draws these emotions from and how empathic the performance can be. I personally find it a very convincing, very moving and a very genuine performance from Tom Cruise in this role and I think he's one of the better actors out there portraying the, a person with a haunted past. There was a lot of buzz about him in this role and there was talk of him being nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor. Uh, unfortunately, it is a nomination that never actually materialised and it's such a shame because he is incredibly good in this role. Finally, I think he's excellent at portraying a person who's uh, seeking redemption. It's a very honest performance of someone seeking redemption and that's what I kind of like about this scene. Uh, standout scene for me is uh, the scene when he's been picking up small bits of Japanese here and there after he's been captured by uh, the Japanese samurai and uh, spending time with the family and he's slowly growing to uh, learn about them and learn about their culture and he sits around the dinner table and he apologizes in Japanese. It's a very moving scene, even though Tom doesn't do much emoting in this scene, he manages to still convey a very powerful scene, and that's something that's not very easy to do. In at number three is the movie Rain Man, and it doesn't feature on many people's uh, best Tom Cruise movies list, and I, the only reason I can think of why is that when you think of this movie, you tend to think of Dustin Hoffman's performance as his autistic savant older brother. However, Dustin Hoffman's performance, while convincing and authentic, I can vouch for that since I have an autistic brother myself, the character doesn't change any. The character arc is the same, there is no arc really, he's the same at the start and finish of the movie, he's essentially a collection of behaviours, mannerisms and tics, which are all very good and authentic, but there's no change. Tom Cruise's arc, on the other hand, is a very dramatic one, in which he pretty much does a 180 from the start of the movie to the finish and it's a much harder job to portray a convincing character arc in, a, in such a dramatic fashion than it is to portray uh, the tics and mannerisms the way Dustin Hoffman did. Not taken away from his performance, it was outstanding, but I genuinely feel like Tom Cruise was the better performer in this movie. One thing that you get to see good evidence of in this is how well Tom Cruise can play a dramatic character arc very subtly. It's uh, very easy to forget that uh, at the start of the movie he starts as a very selfish, uh, very self-involved, uh, exploitative asshole who manipulates everybody around him for his own financial gain. And by the end of the movie he's actually a person who's not that motivated by the money anymore and he's actually just wanting to build a relationship with his, with his brother. 
This makes the closing scenes even more powerful and heartbreaking because now you can see that Tom's character really wants to build this relationship, but of course he can't because his brother can't forge these kind of relationships. It's very moving and I think it's a good example of, uh, of Tom Cruise at his best. It's a very nuanced performance. It's very difficult to see when the actual change occurs. Tom plays it so subtly. There's no real moment in the movie at all where all of a sudden he's, a, he's an empathic character and before he was selfish. It's such a gradual change and that's what makes it such a quality performance and something that I think Tom Cruise does exceptionally well. There's not many actors who can play dramatic arcs like this and make it seem so seamless, and that's what he does very well. Another reason why I picked this particular performance is Dustin Hoffman is a magnificent actor. In pretty much every movie, he's a magnificent actor, and Tom Cruise does not look out of place in this film. In fact, like I said, I think that he actually outshines Dustin Hoffman in this movie and that's something that you can't do unless you're a very very good actor. Standout scene for me in this movie is um, actually one of my favorite pieces of Tom Cruise delivered dialogue and it's when he goes to see the executor of his father's will to find out how much he's inherited. Uh, they talk about the rose bushes. I'm not going to spoil it by, by quoting it but I'm going to link it in the description below. If you want to see Tom Cruise delivering funny dialogue, then just take a look at it. it. It is very good and it's a great example of how well he can deliver comedic dialogue. And number two in our list is a movie that features on many lists and it's probably one that everybody was expecting to be on mine. It is one of only two uh, performances that were nominated for an Academy Award on our list and there's, a, there's a, quite a few reasons why it was nominated. It is Tom's depiction of returning Vietnam War veteran Ron Kovic in the movie Born on the 4th of July. What I like about this particular performance of Tom's is that he manages to portray uh, two different stages of uh, Ron Kovic's life very convincingly. At the beginning of the movie he manages to portray the youthful innocence and naivety of the Ron Kovic who goes off to Vietnam incredibly well. This is probably not that great a surprise. He was very young when he did this movie and those characteristics are very typical in uh, people at the younger end of the age spectrum. So that part is perhaps not that impressive, even though it is still very good. What is incredibly impressive is his performance in the second half of the movie when he's returned from Vietnam and now he's playing an older, more embittered, disillusioned Ron Kovic. This is something that wouldn't have been native to Tom at the time when he, he made this movie. Like I said, he was very young, so I doubt that he would have had many experiences in life that had made him bitter. So to play these sort of aspects so convincingly and so powerfully, makes it an excellent performance and it's a very talented effort from Tom. He did get nominated for an Academy Award for this performance and, and the aforementioned attributes are the reasons why. It's an excellent performance and I can't really remember what it was that beat him to this uh, Academy Award this year but he should probably have taken it home on this year too because this is a great performance and a great example very early on in Tom's career that he could act in dramatic roles. One of the biggest accolades that I can give this movie is that after watching Tom's performance and the film itself and the content I went and hit the Wikipedia page for Ron Kovic and read the whole thing start to finish. As a filmmaker and as an actor, you hope to generate interest and emotions from, from the people watching the movie. The fact that they made me go and research the very topic that they were discussing speaks volumes about the effort that was put into this film and the quality of the final product. There is a standout scene for me. I don't want to give you too much information because it will ruin the dramatic ed edge of it. But if you go and watch the movie, look, look out for the wheelchair scene. You'll know which one I'm talking about when you see it. It's a great performance and it's a, a prime example of just how good Tom Cruise can be. Finally, at number one on my list of excellent Tom Cruise performances is his turn as uh, motivational speaker and stage guru Frank T.J. Mackey in Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia. This is a personal favorite movie of mine, not just for Tom Cruise's performance, but the whole thing is constructed incredibly well. And uh, I kind of like the story. It's, it's a bit whimsical, but it's fun at the same time as being incredibly dramatic and moving. The reason I've picked this as Tom Cruise's best ever performance is just because, th again, this is Tom Cruise playing against type. He's playing a character who, while on stage, is very, uh, he's full of bravado, he's very slick, he's very convincing, he's very confident. But there's a lot more layers to this role than that because when he's off stage, he's actually quite a broken and embittered person and he's someone who struggles with his own emotions quite a lot. All the way through the movie, whether, you're on whether he's on stage or off stage, these emotions that are bubbling beneath the surface of his performance. And that's something that's quite hard to portray when you're not actually letting those emotions out. It's the second time on our list when he's featured in an ensemble cast, and I think he's actually a better performer when he's in an ensemble cast. When he's not relied upon to be the sole performer of a movie, I feel like he really gets to let loose. The shackles come off and he gets to roll with the character, and that's what he does in this movie beautifully. 
It's a, it's a very intriguing character. It's very interesting, very compelling. And I can't really give enough adjectives about this performance. It's so good. As I mentioned before, it's a very deep and layered performance. And this is best exemplified by the scene when he goes to visit his dad who's dying of cancer. He comes to the bedside and uh, this is a person who abandoned him when he was a boy. So he, he really doesn't want to feel any sympathy for him and he's battling with himself. It's a prime example of just how well Tom Cruise can play the conflicted man. It's a role that I think he relishes in, it's a role that I think he excels in, and it's probably a role that he should be given far more often. In this scene you can see all the tension, all of the frustration and anger that's been bubbling up and building up inside him for his entire career is, is all let out in this scene. And in truth, it wasn't even a scripted scene either. He was just supposed to show up and say the lines, but all of the performance, the crying, that was all Tom Cruise. It was all improvised on the day. And I think it shows because you can tell that he really feels this performance. And I think it's Tom Cruise at his best. There's no performance in any Tom Cruise movie which demonstrates his ability better than this scene. I actually think that the reason he got an Academy Award nomination for, for this movie is on the strength of this one scene. It's that good. It's a very powerful and moving scene. It does have another piece of, my, of uh, Tom Cruise dialogue which I, I've always really enjoyed and it's, the, it's in the same scene he comes in and he speaks to Seymour Hoffman about drop kicking the dogs. Listen out for it if you watch it because it's very funny. Well that's all I have time for on this episode so I do hope that you've enjoyed it. If you did then don't forget to share us on social media then all of your friends can enjoy it, all of your family can enjoy it, fuck it, even random strangers can enjoy it. Don't forget to share. If you didn't, then I don't know why you're still watching this and just pretend that you didn't. We are gonna be doing regular broadcasts, so if you are interested in hearing what I have to say in the future, then hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever I do something new. The next episode is gonna be uh, my very first movie review, and I'm gonna be asking the question, is The Dark Knight really as good as everybody thinks it is. It's going to be quite quite an interesting exploration, so I hope that you do come back for it. If you have any comments, maybe you agree with me, maybe you disagree and think I'm full of shit, either way, hit the comment section below and let me know. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. That movie show, take one. Hello and welcome to That Movie Show, our brand new YouTube channel. Fuck, fucked it up again. Hello and welcome to... Hello and welcome to our brand new YouTube channel which we have creatively called That Movie Show. The show where we talk about all things movies. Five performances we've brought... We've chosen... Tom Cruise, we've, we've chosen this performance because... In at number five is the movie Tropic Thunder, the, where Tom Cruise played... Oh, fuck! Fuck! Okay, okay, I've got it this time. He's absolutely outstanding. You motherfucker!